Hello and welcome back. It's time to go on another tour with Lake Clark Resort. This time we're stopping at Dick Prennicke's cabin. My brother Sasha was the one that flew Jared and I to Twin Lakes, which actually this was my first time flying with him in the float plane, and I thought it was really special. The clients followed along in another float plane where my cousin was the pilot, and they landed not too far after us. My younger brother Caleb was in a boat with clients for the day. This is us buzzing them on our way to Twin Lakes. The flight to Twin Lakes from Lake Clark Resort is about 20 minutes long and takes you through a beautiful mountain landscape. We even saw a black bear on the mountain and we saw two moose in the tundra, which was really cool. We weren't even looking for them and we just saw them. Felt like no time had passed when we were reaching the turquoise water of Twin Lakes. Dick Prennicke's cabin is located on the upper Twin Lakes, so that's where we landed. Lake Clark National Park has two park rangers that are stationed there throughout the summer. And when Sasha did his traffic call when we reached Twin Lakes, that was their notification to know that we were coming. It's super convenient because when Dick Prennicke was here, he got his beach all ready for float planes to be parked there because again, this was the way that he was able to get supplies to the cabin, which also makes it super convenient for everyone who's coming up to Twin Lakes to visit which the ranger did say that they see about 1,000 to 1,500 people here in a given summer, which makes sense because this place is so remote and can only be reached by float planes like these. Dick Prennicke's cabin is located not far from the shoreline, but let's go back a little bit in history. So Dick Prennicke wanted to come to Alaska and build a cabin, live in the middle of nowhere for at least a year, and he wanted to do all of this using hand tools. So year one, he came up to Twin Lakes, which there were already people who had a cabin up here, friends of his, I guess, and he cut trees to be able to season so he can build his cabin the next summer, next year. And he did all of it using hand tools. The park ranger said that the whole cabin to construct it was $40. Isn't that wild? I don't know if you can see it, but there are still pencil markings on the wood where Dick was measuring out the notches to stack the logs together. Let's go take a quick peek inside. We're gonna go inside Richard Prennicke's cabin. Here. Are you holding? Is he walking? Okay. You're silly. Alright, let's go inside. They just explained the Dutch door. Which is crazy because my great grandfather flew him and his things here like for years. And he never charged him for it. So, as a thank you, Dick Prennicke bought him and Mary Baby Mary tickets to go to Hawaii. And it was Mary's, I think, first or second time out of the state. And when she, when they got back, they went to Hawaii, loved it so much, by the time they got back, they already bought property in Hawaii, and they were planning on living there and building a house. So, thank you, Dick Prennicke, for <laughs> helping my family out in that way. Sadly, we do not any longer have that Hawaii property. They had to sell it way back then. But this is kind of crazy. Also, look, I come down here. It's a retro Lake Clark air hack. That is wild. I'm gonna put our names in the book. This is where Dick Prennicke would sit and do his um, his journaling. He did a lot, a lot of journaling. He wrote on the calendar, One Man's Wilderness. Like his journals are published. I think I just overheard the Park Service say that they're gonna do another two books or something in the next couple. Also, this part is really cool too. And he would go hiking around. He would leave this map of where he's at, like it says right here, here today, and look at all of the spots that he's been to. Pretty cool. I knew the couple that did the 
like the preservation of this cabin and stuff, they were good family friends of ours too. So, we're like, well, look at this, this is kind of cute. Twin Lakes Champion Sourdough Biscuits and Beans. But my question is, he built this whole thing out of hand tools, lived here for 30 years, completely wild. Could you do something like this? I know I couldn't, but do you think you could do this? This is really cool to see, honestly. Even though it's like literally in my own backyard and I've been here a million times. It's really cool. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the cabin. Did you notice the gravel floor? Well, Dick Prennicky actually sifted through the gravel that was on the beach to make that floor. And he would take that rocks out and wash them periodically to keep his floor clean. Prennicky lived in this cabin for 30 years. And during his time here, he recorded weather patterns, moon phases before that was even on a calendar. He tracked the animals and he spent a lot of time journaling. He filmed and took pictures of him doing all of this. This is how we have videos, segments, and different books about Dick Prennicky. Also, did you see that high building just a couple seconds ago? Well, that is called a cache, and that's where he would store his food so animals couldn't get into it. Not too far away is this outhouse and woodshed and the hiking path to Teetering Rock. We are starting on the Teetering Rock hike, which is literally right on the other side of the cabin. They said it's about three, oh, look at that. Poop. It's about 500 foot elevation gain, less than a mile from from the cabin. I am hiking a little bit further out than our group. Um, I want to pick blueberries, so. We are going to find a spot to sit down and wait for them while wow. oh, I pick. Found a good spot to pick. Absolutely gorgeous. How do you do that? Please demonstrate. Oh, it does. And it hasn't fallen. I can try. No, it's okay. It'll ruin the whole teetering rock experience, you know? a little further behind the group. Pick some blueberries, look how many. Super excited, I'm gonna clean them tonight, put them in my freezer, so then this winter I can make either like blueberry pancakes or blueberry pie. Oh my gosh, my Aunt Chrissy's blueberry pie. It's the best. Walked back to the cabin and spent lunch on the beach and it was just another hour later until our plane came and picked us up to take us back to the resort. I look back on this view and I just think about how my great grandfather would just come in and bring supplies and even bring Dick Prennicky back to his cabin. And this was the same exact view he had too. If you are interested in visiting the cabin yourself, check us out at Lake Clark Resort. We actually have a package specifically designed for the cabin visit. I'll also link below where you can learn more about Dick Prennicky.